The Tormek T8 can sharpen just about everything around your home and your shop. Included with the Tormek is the straight edge jig, the SE77. And this is of course great for straight tools such as chisels and plane blades. The SE77 jig is available for purchase separately and works with any Tormek model. So if you already have a Tormek, you can buy this jig and you're ready to roll. Now, what's awesome about this jig is that there's a couple of micro adjust knobs. So not only can you get a perfectly straight plane blade across the front, but you can also dial it in to be exactly 90 degrees to the edge. Now, what's also awesome about this jig, using the micro adjust knobs, you can actually camber a plane blade, making it slightly convex, which is desirable in some plane blades. So today, I'm gonna to show you how to camber a plane blade using the Tormek and the SE77 straight edge jig. Today, I'm gonna to dive right in to cambering this plane blade using the Tormek T8. If you're interested in other features of the Tormek T8, of course, you can check out some of our other videos. Now, this plane blade goes to a number four hand plane, and I um, sharpen it using the Tormek T8, and it is straight across. Uh, Put it in my hand plane and started planing some wood. Um, and what's cool about it, obviously it was super sharp. I was taking some really nice, a little bit thicker shavings than I might normally take. Um, and it was going very smoothly across here. But with a straight blade on a surface of a piece of wood, often what you might have is that the corners of that blade will dig in just a little bit, uh, depending on how thick of a shaving you're taking. So as you plane across, you'll end up with little tiny ridges uh, where the corners of the plane blade uh, are taking shavings. Now you can see this, again, it's kind of hard to show in a video, but you can see it where there's pencil mark and when there's not a pencil mark. And I can run my finger across that and feel just a tiny ridge uh, right across that piece of wood. Now cambering a plane blade will essentially get rid of those sharp corners so it feathers away at the edges of the plane blade, um, but you will end up with a little bit different kind of uh, surface. It'll be slightly, slightly scalloped. Uh, where that convex shape uh, is digging just that little microns uh, more in the center of the blade versus the edge of the blade. But however, it leaves just a really, really nice surface. So it's often desirable for your finishing planes or your hand planes. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you on the Tormek T8 how we're going to camber this plane blade. This whole process is not reliant on the Tormek T8. It's all about the SE77 jig, which works with any Tormek. The first thing I want to do is mark the very center of my plane blade. I'm going to line that up with the center of the jig and that'll give me uniform camber on both sides of my plane blade. So of course I got to pop out the chip breaker from the plane blade. So simply loosen the screw on my chip breaker, of course, slide that over, pop that out. And now I'm going to find the center of this blade on the back of the blade, just going to measure across and simply find and mark the center. I'll go ahead and mark it in two places, then connect the dots. And that's essentially the center line of this blade. Now I'm going to pop the plane blade into the SE77 jig and you'll note that there's a center mark here and I'm just gonna line that up with the center of my plane blade and try to keep everything nice and straight. Now, I'm not referencing the straight edge over here. Normally, if I wanted to be straight across here, I would take the plane blade and line it right there against the reference edge of this jig to get a nice straight edge. But here, we, since we want to camber evenly on both sides, we're lining it up with the center of the jig here. So next, I wanna check that I am perfectly straight. I told you this blade was honed perfectly straight across. So I'm gonna go ahead and check that I'm protruding straight before we add the camber to this blade. To get me started with that, I'm gonna go ahead and just measure over front and back from that uh, shoulder. And I'm about 5 16 here on this side and on the back, registering against the shoulder and looking down into the plane blade, I'm about 5 16 on this side also. Uh, I tapped it a little bit to get exactly 5 16 so I'll tighten that just a little bit more and then go ahead and check it on the stone. Now that I've got the plane blade in the jig, there's two things I wanna worry about. 
first is setting the correct angle for the grinding and the second is getting it straight all the way across before starting to work on the camber. So I'll use the angle master to set the angle. And I'm dialing this in to 25 degrees, uh, which I want for my plane blade. So I've got that set now to 25 degrees. The second thing I wanna do is make sure I'm all the way across. So I mark the front of the plane blade with a marker and I'll just hold the blade down and turn the wheel just a few times just to rough up that front edge and then I'll slide it off and I'll check my marker and see if we're getting all the way across. Now just from those couple of turns you can see that I've got the marker here on this more on this side but less on the other side. I'm going to remark it, knock it just a tiny bit to push out that push out this corner just a tiny bit and then we'll go ahead and do it again. So now just those couple of turns, you can see pretty much all the markers worn away, so we're straight across. Now we've got the plane blade perfectly straight in our jig, so it's cutting all the way right across the very front. In order to get the camber, the convex shape, I'm going to loosen the two micro adjust knobs just a little bit and go ahead and start grinding with a little bit more pressure on the outside corners and I'm gonna check my progress as I go. I'm gonna take note of where my two micro adjust knobs are and I'm gonna turn them each a quarter turn, loosen both of them. So I'm loosening that a quarter and I'm gonna loosen that a quarter and now I'm gonna get a slight rocking ability of this jig on the universal support. Slide the jig onto the universal support and I can feel it that it can slightly rock left and right. And so that's gonna push out each of those corners just a little bit. I did a quarter turn on each knob. Let's see what kind of shape we get. I'm gonna also make sure I'm putting pressure on the corners and that I rock the jig very slightly, both left and right, pushing out those corners to get a little more wear across the front. Now I'm gonna mark my plane blade again with a marker, a Sharpie all the way across the whole bevel so we can see this really helps to see exactly where the stone is hitting so that's after just about 10-15 seconds and you can see a tiny bit of black marker still well, I can't really see it's right on this side, just a little bit there at the front edge. Otherwise, it's worn the whole bevel away. I'm just going to go ahead and give it another 15 seconds or so, and then I'm going to check and see what kind of camber we have. Now, you can almost see how it's convex. I know this is really hard to capture in a video. Uh, it's not quite as cambered as I'd like, so I'm going to loosen the micro adjust knobs just another eighth of a turn or so and give that a go. Now, when I loosen these two knobs, what that does is loose backs off the screws from the jig and it allows this piece to slightly move okay and that is what allows the corners to dig in a little bit more it shifts the whole jig kind of left and right like that by having that piece loose uh, and so you will get more grinding here at the corners than in the center I've got the initial camber I want on my plane blade. And again, it's really hard for me to show you this uh, in a video, but holding up to a light with a straight edge, I'm getting a little bit of light coming here at the left and right corners that I can easily definitely see the light coming through and it's touching in the center. Uh, so that should give me some nice shavings. Now I played around with how much to change these micro adjust knobs. And what I liked, these are tightened down right now. Uh, what I preferred was about a little over a quarter turn. So there's a quarter, I'll go a little bit further. And again, this one quarter and a little bit further. That was the kind of um, wiggle, wiggle room that I liked here at the start. So you can see uh, here, just getting that little bit of a wiggle uh, back and forth. And this is the initial camber that I'm going for for this plane blade. Now that I've got the plane blade camber that I want here with the coarse grindstone, I'm gonna switch it over to the finer grindstone, refine the edge, and then finally hone that edge and we'll check it out in the plane. Now I've put the chip breaker back on the blade and popped it into my hand plane. Now the way I like to set my blade is to pull back the blade so it's not protruding at all. Don't forget, uh, take up the slack, so I'll dial it forward slightly and go ahead and 
plane across. It's actually taken a little bit of a shaving, so that's all right. Barely protruding. I'm gonna kick it out a little bit more to the center. Okay, really not taking much of a shaving at all, so I'm just gonna dial it forward very slightly. Still not much, just slightly more. Okay, now we're taking a little bit of shaving right in the center of the blade. Very thin, light shaving. Now I'm gonna check the left and right sides. The right side is not taking any shaving. Now I'll take it to the left side. The left side is not taking any shaving. That's pretty much where I want it to be for a final smoothing plane. That's just maybe a hair light. So I'll just push it forward maybe that tiny bit more. Really getting there. That's full width across. Still not cutting on the left or the right. And that's just about where I want it to be for some final passes on the surface of my uh, larger piece. We'll check it out. Here is the same piece of wood I was using at the start. It still has actually some of my pencil lines over there you can see. And we'll go ahead and try it out now with the new cambered iron. All right, not taking, not taking too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and just dial it forward that little bit more. Just a little, tiny little turn like that. There we go. Now, if you can make out where we're taking these shavings, it's coming right out of the center, right out of the center uh, of my blade where it's protruding the most and there's nothing coming out the edges. Now this shaving is only about that wide so that's how much of my blade is protruding. I'm going to go ahead and dial it forward a little bit more, get a little more of the blade cutting in. There we go. Now we've got a little bit thicker shaving, wider shaving I should say, about that wide. Still not, still only about half the blade width. Very smooth cutting. Now you can see I've taken away just a little bit of the pencil marks. Can you see the pencil lines right there? So I'll go ahead and do a few more passes and I've got it dialed in just a little bit more. Getting all the way to the edge. I'll do one last Pass back across. That is very smooth. Now I told you you get a little bit of scalloping since you've got that camber and you know I can feel a little bit of that scalloping as I'm going across but not so many plain track marks. The other thing I want to note between the straight blade and the camber blade is the shavings themselves. This is from the straight blade, it's all the way across and you can see it's nice and crisp all the way out to the edges as I had the straight blade protruding the same amount from the plane blade. However, the camber blade, it's not quite as wide, I wasn't going all the way out to the edges and you can note just at the edges of the shaving how it starts to really splinter off and that's where it's barely taking any shaving on the left and right and it just kind of feathers out there so you can see uh, it's a little bit easier to push because you're not taking as wide of a shaving but also it's feathering out right to the edges so you're not getting any of those plane tracks. So that is how to camber a plane blade using the Tormek SE77 jig. You can see how easy it is and what beautiful results you can get. Now for more information or to purchase this jig that works with any Tormek you can visit highlandwoodworking.com. <music>